Hi there, welcome back to Artie Julie. Today we're going to look at doing this um, hummingbird picture and I've put a few of my garden fuchsias in there um, and don't forget that you can download the instruction sheet and a cheat sheet off the site. Okay, let's get going. Okay, so we're going to start looking at um, doing this picture now. We're going to use the very free technique, but first of all, we just have to draw in a, the position of the bird and a few of the flowers. Not all of the flowers and leaves and things, we can put some of those in a bit later on to fill in, but you just want the main shapes here. So the way I've done that is I've drawn it out onto a rough piece of paper first, scribbled on the back with a graphite stick or a soft pencil, a B or a, um, something like a 4B or a 6B, put it down again, gone back over the line so it transferred onto this nice piece of um, paper here. I'm going to use Bockingford, this one's actually 300 gram weight Bockingford paper, and it's slightly tilted, so you always have your board slightly tilted so you can work on that. Um, so we're going to make a start now. I'm going to start with the flowers. We're just going to draw a few little flowers in here. I've got the flowers drawn on. They're little fuchsias. Nice little delicate shape of fuchsias here. I'm going to mix up a little puddle of a couple of reds. Um, a cadmium, cadmium red and an Elysian crimson. Make them quite strong. So I'm going to use them virtually neat off my palette here. So I've got quite a big palette with just a little bit of painting around the corners which I can just put a little water onto those and it would just makes a strong, just um, not quite a puddle, but quite a rich bit of paint. And now we're going to just put the paint on um, with a small, uh, sorry, put the water on first. I'm just going to use something like a six or an eight round brush. And we're just going to take the, the water and put the water on in the direction of the flower petals. Don't really need to draw the flowers on once you're confident with the shape of that. We just put the water on in the direction of the flower petals. Let's take them out and the puddle out just a little bit. And then you'll just use the tip of the brush and you'll get one of your reds, probably the slightly paler red, and just drop it into that water so it flows. So you're just dropping it into the edge of that water. Drop it in the top and drop it in the bottom here, just so it flows around the, the water. So it, it makes the shape of the flower. You've used the water to create the shape of the flower, but then this paint will just spread. So where it's the bottom edge of it is, it'll be darker. And as it just spreads very gently up to the top, it will be lighter. I'm just going to dry my brush, take a little bit of the puddle out and just encourage it to blend in just a little way across the flower here. While I'll, I'll now go back to the darker red, the Elysian Crimson, and just put a little bit of that into the bottom edges just to make those a little bit more pronounced there and then perhaps just encourage just a little bit of a um, a blob at the top there just to give you the shape of the top of the future so I'll repeat that again so you can see what's going on clean my brush just a dash or two of water you just have two petals coming out take a little bit of the surplus of that out so it's not too puddly in with your one red and just flick that into the bottom edge of that water so it will spread up the water so the, the, the flower will be light on the top part and darker at the bottom where I put the paint into it. A little bit into the middle there so it just naturally flows up and spreads. And then just a little bit of dark red into the centre of that so it makes it a little bit stronger and then I'll just put a little curl at the top for where it's going to join onto the stem. Um, you can just encourage it to run a little bit or you can just lift out that top edge just slightly after it's spread a bit more just to give you some shaping into it. Last one on here, dash of, oh, should be clean water, not grubby water. If I put the paint straight onto it, this, it would go very hard. So I'm just getting a bit of variation into that colour. So just three dashes of water in the shape of the petals. Put a little flick of paint underneath there, quite rich, strong paint. Just flick it, let it curl round the bottom of the petal. Let it flick it round, let it curl round the bottom here. And then just encourage it to go up. And just let it spread naturally up where you've put the water. Clean the brush into the darker red, the stronger darker Elysian Crimson. Put a touch of that in so that spreads up as well. And a bit round the top there to give you the little knobbly bit on the top there. A couple of blood buds. 
and they're very similar just a dash of water bud shape dash of water look I've actually used grubby water there so you can see what I'm doing which is a bit of a lie I've just used grubby water because I didn't clean my brush enough um, okay so I'm just flicking that down flicking that down leaving it lighter on one side and so it sort of spreads across there perhaps putting a little bit of a hint of a, a bud where it would join into the top clean my brush into the slightly darker red, the stronger darker losing crimson, and just put that round the bottom edge there, so it just gives it a bit more shape. Um, flowers are nearly there. Oh, I've just got one more to do. Dash, dash, dash with water, really quite quickly. Take a bit of the puddle out, and then flick in the the colour just underneath the bottom edge, underneath the bottom edge. Let it bleed up naturally where you've put the water and then a little bit of the dark red just underneath some of those. Um, we've got to let the these parts dry before I can put the centre part of the fuchsia in. There's a little purpley bit which goes in there and then the stamens. But we've got to let those dry otherwise it will just run into it completely. So um, we don't want that so we've got to let those dry. So while those are drying we can go on to the leaves. So for this I'm just going to mix up a puddle of cadmium yellow, not too strong with the cadmium yellow, just a bit of yellow on its own here. Um, so just a puddle of that and then a bit of the, I'm going to use a, a stronger blue, a Prussian blue or intense blue or a thallo blue. She said I'm putting it into the brown for some reason or other. I don't know why I've done that. Oh, I've just splashed all my paper with colour. Quick dab of that. So I'm going to go into a, a Prussian blue um, or an intense blue or thallow blue, one of those quite strong blues here. And then a touch of burnt sienna, a reddish brown colour. And this gives you a very strong bottle green colour, quite a strong dark green. So if it's not going green, add, add a bit more brown to it. If it's looking too brown, add a bit more blue to it. But you should get quite a strong bold green, very useful green this one because it's um, quite a rich colour. Once I can get it going, I shall show you in a moment how that works. So this has got to be stronger than the yellow. Hang on, it's gone the other way. Now I've got it too browny. I always tend to test my colours somewhere first. Let's just, just get my little cheat sheet. And I'll test the colour out, see what it looks like. That just needs a touch more burnt um, burnt sienna into it. And there it goes, nice greeny colour. So we use both of those, the yellow and the dark green colour. So with the leaves, we're going to do a similar sort of process. Pick a, a leaf where it's um, not touching anything else. And we're going to put the water on in the direction of the veins. I'm just going to do it in a series of dashes in the directions of the veins. Just a few little dashes on. Again, just take the puddle out a little bit. And then I'm going to take the yellowy colour, the slightly weaker yellowy colour, run that round the edge and let it encourage it to run up those areas where you've put the, the water. So you can just encourage it to run up there. So it's quite puddly at this stage. So that's half the, petal, the leaf done like that. And then I'll get the darker green. So I've just cleaned my brush, dried it a little. And then go on to the darker green again, just doing this around the outside edge of the, the leaf and just encouraging it to run into where I've put the water. Because you've wet it, these all, colours will mingle and merge a lot more easily. And I'm also going to just run it down perhaps the one side of the centre vein there. You can see this gradually coming out of the picture. So it's yellow on one side, green on the other at the moment. So then I'm going to touch in a little bit of that darker green into some other places as well to give you a more enclosed leaf. So that's giving you a good colour variation. Some of these gaps are a little bit wide, so just bring them a little closer together. Just to bring them in a bit. And I'd leave it something like that. A nice varying shade leaf. Just clean my brush, dry it a little, touch the tip of the brush in, just take out any little puddles which are forming there. 
but a very casual quick way of doing leaves I can't do this one because it's next to that one so I'll do one down here so if you find it difficult to see where you put the water for this particular one you can use the weak yellow colour first of all all over instead of using the water first as long as it remains puddly like that so if you can see it's putting on it's not on to dry it's puddly so again I'm just going to flick 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 just avoid the flower with the yellow I'm going to do it in all over first it's a slightly different way of doing it to that one and then I'm going to just dry my brush into the stronger darker green I'm going to flick that round the edge here down the middle letting some of that yellow show through so you're getting this varying tone onto it. Do it fairly quickly because otherwise the, the, it starts to dry out and it won't blend then. So we want this to blend. Let's just go around the top of the fuchsia, leave a little gap around there. And if it's, so it's, you can see it's not blending quite so well because I didn't put the water on, but it's just hopefully you can see it a little bit better of where I was intending to put the water. I'm going to just clean my brush, dry it out and put just a little bit more yellow into this one because it's going too much the same colour. So keep it puddly and there we go. We just want a, a very casual way of doing these leaves so they're not too laboured and we're not doing a botanical drawing, we're doing a little easy quick way of doing an impression of a leaf. So doing it back the other way so just flick the water on first on that one, yellow on one side um, green on the other, just go around the outside edge, flick it into the water, it should run up the direction of the the veins. Take that one off the picture. So I can come back and do a few more of those or if you just want to join me in a minute, I'll just dry those off and I'll do a few more leaves. Or we can do something else while those are drying. But I'll just, I think I'll just continue to do just a few more leaves. So if you want to join me in, in a moment, I'll finish these off. And you can come and see what I've, where I've got to. Okay, let's finish these fuchsias off. I've done loads, a few more leaves around here now. So they look as a nice uh, little collection. You could add a few more in, in between those as well if you wanted to. Um, so just to finish the little fuchsia flowers off, we want to use a little bit of purple and if you make up um, ultramarine blue and a touch of Elysian crimson that will give you a nice purpley colour and that gives you the little skirt, just to make sure this is dry otherwise it will just run back into it, the little skirt which sticks out underneath the centre of the fuchsia. So a little flower like that comes in and that just gives you the centre of those. Take the puddles out, that's just onto dry paper with those. And then we just flick down the, or up, whichever way you want to go with those. A little bit of the stem, so just take the Elysian Crimson and just flick it from there upwards to give you a hint of the little stems from the buds here and then flick it down here for the little stamens coming out and a few dots. So just have those, doesn't matter if the purpley colour picks up. Just a dash or two with the, the sorry, the Elysian Crimson and then a dash or two for the stems. So those are the flowers, pretty well finished. You can always add a few more leaves in afterwards if you want to. And in fact, the little I just think we want to stems from the leaves as well, just to give you the, the little bit of the finishing touch for those. But you might want to add a few in, see how, see how you feel at the end of the picture. Let's have a look at doing the bird. What I want to do is get, try and get this bird to look like it's fluttering a little. Um, so the way we're going to do that is to put the wings on first and keep those in the same sort of method where we're keeping it this loose way of painting. I'm mixing up a bluey grey colour, ultramarine blue and a touch of burnt umber. Um, that's for the outside edge of the, the wings here and then we're going to make something a little bit stronger and darker to go into that so I'm going to use the same colour again um, if I can find a clean bit to mix in. Ultramarine blue and burnt umber just a little bit stronger to have that on the edge there. Perhaps a bit of the purple colour I had before. I might even have a bit of the ultramarine blue as well. Let's put a bit of water onto that to give you a bit of the colours into the wing. 
to the wing. You just have to be careful of the direction you put the water on. I'll start using some clean water now rather than grubby water. Again, I'm still only using this six or eight round brush here. And we're going to put the water on in the direction of the, the flight feathers. So just dash, 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 down with that into the into the body there. Using the medium strength or weaker strength bluey grey colour. Flick that in underneath where you've put the water. It's very difficult to see it, so if it hits the water, great. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. It's just giving you the outside edge of those wings. So then you get your stronger ultramarine blue and burnt umber and flick it back the other way. To go in, follow the wing a little bit more precisely now. So just up the wing there, up into the water, up that way. And something like that will give you the wing shape. Um, and a little bit of the purple colour into that as well, perhaps just to give it a bit more colour under his armpit. Perhaps a little touch of the blue, just to make him look a little bit more like a blue bird, little hummingbird there. That's one wing done. So a very quick way of painting this is. So do the same with the other wing, trying to avoid this wing here. Dash, dash, dash dash with the water, weaker bluey grey, flick it in from the top, dash it down so it curls around the where you've put the water there and it just gives you the impression of the, the wing there. Again I'll swap it, perhaps just use the blue, ultramarine blue on the outside edge of this one to give you a, a little bit more of the colouring of the top of the wing so it varies a bit. So that's another wing done. Um, the tail is just the same, too much of a blob of water, let's just use that blob, one, two, three, perhaps, perhaps four tail feathers, make sure they come to the same point at the end here, and then flick the bluey grey colour in, let it just curl round where you've got the water on there, dry the brush, take a little bit of that puddle out, and I'm going to flick the slightly stronger darker bluey grey back out again make it stronger where it joins the body. So those are the wings and the tail feathers put on. We want to just put some impression of where the, the flight feathers were. To make it look like it's fluttering, I'm just going to put some little dashes in as if the air's just moved around the wing here. So a very weak bit of paint. Just put a few little dashes on. Very, very weak paint. That's almost too strong, so I'm just going to dry my brush and take the puddle out. So you've just got this little impression of where the wing was. So it's just giving you this very, um, almost as if it's just moved the air slightly around the edge of the wing there, just to give it the impression of it's fluttering by there. It's, just, it's almost grubby water for this. And again, just where this wing was at the front edge, we'll just put a little couple of dashes in with just or just virtually grubby water. So hopefully that makes it look like it's moving a little in and around the wing there. Let's have a look at doing the body of the, the bird now. So we're going to use every possible blue that you can use here. So I've got a little bit of ultramarine blue. Should have some cobalt blue somewhere. There's a bit of cobalt blue over here. I can use a bit of that one. Um, a little bit of cerulean blue. Um, just all the blues I've got. Quite strong, you want these to be quite strong. And we're going to do a bit of purple, perhaps a little bit of bright green with a, a lemony yellow and a, a little touch of ultramarine blue to give me a very bright green. A bit of the purple colour I've used before, but quite strong with that. So again, I'm just going to use the small brush. This time I'm going to dot on all around the bird's body just dot on raised blobs of water, just with a small brush. Leave the eye, just leave that for a few moments. You'll probably find that if you go too far down the body, that it will, it will have dried out before you get to it. So I'll perhaps go about halfway down and then start adding the painting. So you want a bit of very bright blue, a bit of cobalt or intense blue or something like that. Dot that in, oops, let's just get that going. You need to have puddles puddles of paint, just some nice puddles of paint over the top of his head so it starts to run into the water in some places and not in others. 
tidy up the edge of the head as you go. So you're just tidying up the top of the edge. So the idea of this is to leave some little sparkly white bits in the um, paper showing through. So you're just leaving those as the gaps in between the the colouring there. So I've just swapped to an ultramarine blue to make it brighter into and around the bird there. Let's just swap to another colour. We might have a little bit of the purpley colour under his chin here. Give him a bit of brightness, change the colour. They're so beautiful these little birds that they you don't have time to see all the lovely colours on them as they flit past. I've only ever seen them when I've been on holiday. It's not something we get in Britain very often. Um, and then a little bit of the bright green down here. Again, we're just using all these lovely colours because we can just tidy the edges up as you go. Let them mingle and merge these colours just a little bit. So down here now the water's started to dry out. So just going to clean my brush again and dot on some nice clean water. It, this has to stay wet, otherwise it, it, um, it starts to look too spotty as if the colours aren't merging. If you put it onto dry paper, it looks like um, it looks like a dalmatian rather than a, a blended look to it. Let's have a little bit of the cerulean blue. That's a nice pale but bright blue into the body here. Gives that lovely vibrant colour. But the colour choice is up to you. You, if you, you look at these. There's hundreds of different colours into these birds. So some of them are just taking a little bit of the puddle out and a little bit too wet on that and just tidy the front edge up as I go. Lovely bright colouring here. Then perhaps I'll go back under the arm here with the ultramarine blue. An arm? Underneath the wing, I should say. don't think they have arms as well. Bringing that down into the lower part of him. Um, perhaps I'll swap back to a bit of purple here just to bring the colour round to a little bit more of the purple. Just quite strong when you're putting this paint on. If it's too weak it will just go very bland and if it's too wet it will just flatten out completely. You won't get any shape at all to the blobs of paint there. It's looking a little stripey so I'm just going to blend a little bit of the blue into the purple to stop it looking too and natural a little bit down there. So I just want to seat the wing on. Now that's dry, I can just dot on a little bit of water onto the wing again. I have to make sure that's dry first and just take a little bit of that ultramarine blue up into there just so it, it looks like it's the wing is joining onto the body. Not too far up the wing, just a little way just to to bring that colour into the body. I'm just taking a little bit of that out as well. Perhaps just a little bit of the ultramarine blue and burnt umber onto the body just underneath the wing there to make it look a little bit more rounded and a touch or two underneath the front edge there. Um, we now have to let that dry just a few minutes before I can put the eye and the beak on. So I'll just leave that for just for a second. I think it actually might get away with this. I think it should be dry. So nice strong dark. And all you're going to do with the beak onto the dry paper for the beak is just flick out with your brush. Just aim to go a little bit of a, a beak coming up there. Oops. And just bring it into the body there just a little way. I just put that in a little too far. Just clean the brush, dry it. Take a little bit of that back out again. It gives that's the beak in there and the all magical eye. Again, the strong ultramarine blue burnt umber to bring into life by putting just a little circle in here, overlapping the colour just a little way, and just leave a tiny little dot of white in there. So that's about it really for the bird and the flowers, but I just want to add a little bit of a sparkle to this, as if the pollen's coming down, falling out of the um, flower petals here. So I'm just going to get a bit of the red and just Flick my brush and just have a few little speckles of red coming into this. Not too much, otherwise it looks like he's been shot. And, and then perhaps a bit of purple in there as well. 
might even have a little bit of blue. Get your tissue ready just in case you get too big a blob where you don't want it and just dab it off straight away. And a little bit of blue around him as well. Just adds a little bit of something to him. And there we go. That's all there is to it.